What's up guys, Chris and Steve here from Bogus Prospect. If you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome. If you're an old model we hat like this one, it's great to see your smiling faces. But what are we doing today? It is super simple. We're gonna go for a walk up the creek and we're gonna start learning this creek. So what we're looking for are the indicators of the gold and where it's hiding. We haven't really worked this creek out yet, uh, so this is the opportunity to do it. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to remove your gold from the heavies and black sands that you will acquire on any given trip just like this one so you can show your mates and sell it if you want to. Well, Steve's already on the gold, so I better get my button to gear, turn the detector off, get the gum boots on, and start scratching some cracks. Get them clean, because we all like cream, clean, cream, cream, clean cracks. This is the flood debris from the December flood, and we are at least a good 20 foot above the current riverbed down there. So you can see just how high the water came, and that means that down here, there is going to be lots of deposited flood gold. So Steve just took his sample out from in here and I'm going to come back to this channel which is directly in line with where Steve is working and we've got some packed in river gravels in this spot. So we'll bust these open and hopefully pull out a few pickers, bits of gold and a shotgun pellet or two. Well, that didn't really pay off. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Five little dots, and uh, I think we're gonna find a new crevice. Come a fair way downstream. Steve is up there doing his work on the gravel bar we were just at. Uh, I've spotted a few nice crevices in here with some very packed gravels, but what's really piqued my interest is this area over here. This, this cobble looks right. I can see lots of iron rich rocks. Uh, it's hard up against bedrock and there's only about a foot and a half worth of soil sitting on top of it. So likely gold would have been shedding on top of this during the floods. We're gonna take a sample out of just here. Even though that wasn't a full pan, we got some decent gold. Straight away saw way more heavies in the pan, lots more tin, lots more iron. And if we scroll up to the shiny stuff, there's about 25 to 30 specks worth of gold there. That is really good. And they're of decent size. It's not master gold, they're proper specks. So what I'm gonna do is sample further upstream and just see how far back this deposit goes. Uh, and that way we can maybe set the high banker up and see if the spec count gets any better. We can definitely set the high banker up. And if it doesn't, we've still got a spot here that we can work. Ah, 
hardly anything in that. That's the only dot one little nano speck. This really indicates to me the importance of test panning like this. By doing this stretch, it's helped me identify that most of my gold is going to be situated on hard bedrock, the hard, hard bedrock. Now, normally, if you're on bedrock that was breaking up, it was fragmenting, have lots of cracks and crevices, a little bit of clay in it, you'd be on the money, but not always. And this seems to be the case here. The gold isn't settling in that clay. It's actually settling out before it when it can hit some of those really deep hard walled crevices that it can't escape from so we're going to concentrate on some of them steve and i have been working away quite diligently at just trying to pick out a few crevices and we've had some success we found a little bit of gold nothing that's going to blow your socks off though so we're going to go for a bit of a walk up around a corner that we've never been to before just to see what's there maybe we'll luck out and we'll find some bedrock that is very creviceable or high bank spot either way we're going to come back here later on after we check this spot out We made it up around the corner. It wasn't too far from where we were originally. We've come to this beautiful outcropping of bedrock that you can see behind me and that you've seen me working with the gold monster, uh, just doing a little bit of crevicing. I've only found bullets and hot rocks so far, but there's so many crevices in here with uh, tight packed gravels and everything's crumbling and stuff. It's a beautiful gold trap. So we're gonna try our luck here. Been doing a ton of metal detecting, found lots of false signals, hot rocks, bits of junk. Steve has persisted through doing some pans and he found one cracker of a pan. He's about to take another one from a similar area and we're going to do a few more tests to see if this is a place worth high banking. Steve just finished his second pan out of those grass roots and look at that color. It is everywhere. There'd be easy 100 plus specs in that pan. That is, that's good. He found it. With any creek that you get onto, and this is a new creek for both of us, uh, you have to spend some time acclimatizing to it. And that's what we're doing. We're just walking up and down. I keep talking about finding spots to high bank. That's the ultimate goal. We want to find really big deposits. But today is really about looking for it, where it's settling, what it's settling with, uh, the, the terrain, is it settling in clay? Is it settling on bedrock? Is it in the grass roots? Where is it? And that's what exploring and prospecting the definition of prospecting is looking for gold it's not about mining it so that's what we're doing we're prospecting and so far steve's on the money today he's on the money steve and i have diligently worked away and done another about half dozen pans or so each found some beautiful gold we're sticking right on that sort of 100 150 specs every single pan and we've discovered that the indicators on this particular creek seem to be the black and red tinted heavies if you can find them then you're definitely going to be finding gold uh if you get one or one or either of them on their own you don't seem to get as much gold there are crevices that have a reasonable amount in it but so far we've been unable to locate one that's just been magnificent so instead of getting like the 150 specs a pan in the grass roots here we're in a crevice we're probably sitting around 20 or 30 pieces steve's going to finish up his last test pan and then we're going to head out of here and i'm going to take you home and i'm going to show you guys how i separate gold from my black sands and iron stone so you can have clean shiny gold to show your mates and sell if you wish all right, I will see you at home. Ah. 
So you've got back off the creek after a hard day's work and you're left with a pan or a bucket or a couple of buckets worth of concentrates, especially if you're using a high banker with miner's moss or carpet in it. And you're looking at all this pretty delicious concentrates and you can see bits of gold in it and you're questioning, how do I get the gold out of the black sand? The gold I've got here is the first two weeks worth of work in May, so it's a little bit longer than normal and I had to save it up because I'm using dream matting and dream matting leaves you with next to no concentrates. This is probably not the case in your scenario if you're using any older style matting. There are two parts to the cleanup. Now, if you are using a vortex matting system or some of the rubber matting systems by people like Goldhog, then chances are you're not going to need to do the first stage. I'm only going to show you the first stage. Instead, what I'm going to do is put links in the description below to people who do it very, very well. And that is running your concentrates through a cleanup sluice. Cleanup sluice works exactly the same as a regular sluice. However, the riffles are finer, it catches less material, and it super concentrates your gold down to about the level that I've got in this pan at the moment. You can build cleanup sluices at home with nothing more than some gutter channeling and some V-riffle matting and using your garden hose. Uh, again, I'll leave links in the description below. Check them out. They all work excellently. Once you get down to the level of concentrates that I've got in my pan currently, you're going to need a few extra items to help you along. You're going to need your concentrates, you're going to need a cleanup pan, you're going to need one snuffer bottle, but two is better, some soapy water, some scales to show off, a little coin to make your gold look even bigger, and a Clash Guitars pick doesn't go astray. A lot of the heavy minerals in here are going to be magnetized, which is where one of these comes in handy. A magnet. These magnets come with the Mind Lab panning kit, but you can use almost any type of magnet. Even a fridge magnet will work adequately. The trick that you want to make sure is that you keep the surface of your magnet clean for easy cleaning. So what we're going to do is put this in a plastic bag. So when we run it over the dirt, we can simply remove the plastic bag, the heavies will fall off, and your magnet remains clean. The more you let it dry out, the easier this process is. There you go. So you can already see that we're starting to collect a fair amount of magnetic particles. Once you've removed the magnetic particles, you'll have further reduced the total amount of concentrates you have and you'll be ready to start panning it down. A lot of people uh, get a little bit too ambitious and use an entire pan's worth of concentrates to pan down right off the bat and you shouldn't really be doing that if you're just starting out. As time goes on and you get better at panning down these concentrates, you'll get uh, the capabilities to pan more at one time. But for now, I suggest starting out at a ramp somewhere between a teaspoon and a tablespoon's worth of material at a time. In here, I have some soapy water. You can see the bubbles in there. You can use almost any kind of dish soap, jet dry, uh, rinse aid, anything that breaks the surface tension of the water. Now, the reason we add soapy water is to prevent the gold from floating. The very, very fine particles, and indeed, some of the larger particles will float on the surface tension of the water if you don't add soap to it. As you can see here, we've got gold absolutely all over the pan mixed in with these black sands and ironstone. So what we're going to do is make a really conscious effort, just like you would in panning, to get it to one corner. So we're giving it quite a vigorous shake. And then what we're going to do is use our hand as a tapping action. The tapping action basically shunts the gold right back into the corner. So you want to do it in the middle of your dirt, not off to one side. If you do it to one side, all the heavies will walk to that side. So what this is effectively doing is putting the gold to the bottom and right to that back corner of the pan, which is in that, that rim there. Now the fun part, right? We're gonna use our two index fingers as our tilters. So we've got thumbs over the top of the pan. They're not holding anything, they're just securing it. So, uh, so you can see that my, there is a gap. They're just there just in case anything slips. My two fingers, my index fingers, are used to tilt the pan back and forth like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off on a slight angle tipped towards us. So you can see that the water down here is closest to my body and that means the pan is inclined back like this to, to me. This back edge is effectively the bottom of your pan. Do not look at the actual flat bottom as the bottom. If you're returning to a position like this, this technique will not work. So if water is evenly covering the base, you're gonna have issues. It's always gotta remain back tilted towards you. This is your neutral position. What you're gonna use is your index fingers to tilt the pan forward and back, forward and back. And if you watch the water slowly, 
you'll see two waves come up, go over the top of the black sand and pull some of the heavies down. You don't want to watch too much up here where the gold is. You want to be watching right at the front of your pile because any pieces of gold that are going to escape are going to tip down that front of the pile, pause at the front of the pan there and then travel down. I always return to this position. Now I've got a lot of concentrates in this pan. I said you want to start with a tablespoon or a teaspoon's worth of material. If you see gold walking down like I've already got here, you can push it back with your finger and it's always a good idea to tip the pan to the front edge, give it a quick little tap, that'll walk some of the lighter material to the front and you continue tipping. All right, we've got to a point where we've got a large amount of black sands down here. And if you're doing it at about a teaspoon at a time, it's not you're not really gonna have this problem. But if you're doing it like me and you've got a significant amount of concentrates at the top, you'll start to find that you'll really need to tip the pan back the other way and vigorously shake that gold back into the corner. But if you do that, the stuff you've already removed is gonna come back and fall in on top of it. So we're gonna use our snuffer bottle, one of our snuffer bottles, to suck this stuff up. And about 15 minutes later for what I just panned down, we've got some relatively clean gold. We're probably sitting at 99% here. There's a little bit more of that ultra, ultra fine stuff and you would just continue to do the same thing to get that out. I'm not too fussed about that today uh, because when I do eventually go to sell all my gold, I'll do a big smelt and a lot of it will drop out in that smelting. Now, a lot of you will be wondering why I didn't use my secondary snuffer bottle. Now I like to keep one of these with nothing in it, just clean fresh water to suck this gold up if I'm not going to dry it out and weigh it straight away. But in this case I'm not going to do that. What we're going to do is just pull the water off and let that dry before we weigh it. This is the stage where we use the two other useful items, the small coin and the Clash Guitars pick. Those two bits just there are by far the best bits that I've pulled out so far this month. We've got a beautiful specimen in ironstone and just a solid slug. I've already weighed him. I know he weighs 0.1 and that also weighs 0.1 just there. Now that I've let this gold dry for two and a half weeks because my camera ran out of battery at that last scene and, and now we're here, uh, it's time to finally do the weigh-in. All this gold is just the first two weeks. In May, I've had to wait until I can get here to do it. There we go. Four and a quarter grams worth of gold is a pretty good result for the first two weeks of panning and sluicing in May. And I've since added to it. There's a fair amount of gold in that too. At today's current gold price, we're looking at approximately $250 to $260 worth of alluvial gold in just the first two weeks. Now, as our first two weeks solid working, that's probably about eight to nine hours worth of digging. A big shout out to Kevin Maxwell Kerr, Joshua Lornette, Andrew McCleary, Emily Clements, James, you're a bit sneaky, no last name, Jonah Grimmer, G Cooper, Dan Kane, Frank Vargo, and Leopold Lovett. What a name. If you haven't already, please hit that bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. The like, share, and subscribe button also go a long way to helping me grow the channel bigger and better for you guys. Until next time, guys, I hope to see you out in the creek. Peace, and I'm out.